What is going on all of you beautiful people, it is Colossal Kiwi here bringing you another Dying Light Top 5 and this time we're going to be taking a look at the Top 5 Special Grenades in Dying Light. Now what do I mean by Special Grenades? Basically any explosive item in the game with an elemental effect that has the grenade icon for its item in the inventory. So you know you're going through the inventory looking at all the items and for a sword or like a picture of a sword for the grenades as a grenade and for other things maybe like the airstrike it has a flare and the trap bombs have like trap bomb icons while the trap bombs and the airstrikes and all that they're not going to be included these are only items that have the grenade icons and the DIY grenade is also not going to be included in this top five because it's not a special grenade it doesn't have an elemental effect or anything like that it's just a regular grenade and I will be ranking these special grenades based on their overall usefulness in general, but anyway, let's get into the countdown. Kicking things off in the number 5 place, we have the Sick Bomb. Now if it's entertainment that you seek, then look no further because it doesn't get much more entertaining than the Sick Bomb, and the reason why I say that is this right here. Just making the zombies spontaneously bust out some breakdancing moves never gets old, I never get tired of watching this. But the thing about this special grenade is that it's not really useful in any way. Like yeah, you can distract virals and walkers and keep them occupied for a while while they break out their dance moves, but you can't use it on the bigger enemies like the goons and the demolishers, although the, the gas does still spray out of their butts, <laughs> but uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't make them do the breakdancing moves, doesn't stun them, they can still attack you and kill you like you can see right here. And also, the sick bomb doesn't work on humans, so that's another one of its downfalls, but regardless, it's extremely fun to use and it can help you out in certain situations. So it comes in at number 5. Moving down to the number 4 place, we have the Toxic Grenades. Now right off the bat, one great thing about the Toxic Grenades is that it works on all enemies. It works on humans, works on walkers, virals, goons, demolishes, it damages all of them and gives them the toxic effect which deals damage over time and stuns them. Now it doesn't stun the bigger enemies, which is one way I guess it doesn't work on them, so like the goons and demolishers, they don't stun, but everyone else, including human enemies, they do start throwing up which stuns them for a very long amount of time. Now one thing I picked up on when using the toxic grenades is that they work extremely well in combination with fire, so what I often did was I would throw a toxic grenade and then I would throw a molotov and right away that ignites the zombies as the molotovs usually do, but then it sends them into the panicking frenzy where they dance and they die much quicker as opposed to when you throw a molotov by itself and the zombies, you can see there's a viral that stays alive for this part, kind of just runs around for a bit while on fire, but then if I use the toxic grenade and then the molotov, it could just be from the damage from the uh, the initial blast from the toxic grenade, but I'm pretty sure, and this was the case in Dead Island, and I know it's a completely different game, but I'm pretty sure this is also the case in Dying Light, to a, a less of an extent, where the toxic effect does help to boost the damage that enemies take from fire. Speaking of Dead Island, in the number 3 place we have the right hand of Glover, and the reason why I mentioned Dead Island once more is because in Dead Island there was the left hand of Glover, which was an item that you could actually equip as a weapon, and you would wave your hand magically in front of zombies, and it would make them knock over, it would knock them over onto the ground, including thugs, which are like the goon equivalent in that game. And in Dying Light, it has the same effect, you throw it at the zombies, it knocks them back, and it actually deals a decent amount of chain lightning damage, as you can see, like it'll link between the different zombies. However, the right hand of Glover does not work on humans or the bigger zombies like the demolishers and the goons which is kind of unfortunate I believe it still deals damage to them but it doesn't knock them over and that would have been quite nice because then you could just stomp their heads and kill them right away but that is one downfall but regardless it's really fun to mess around with it looks really cool when you use it it can be quite helpful and it deals a decent amount of damage and coming in at the number two place, we have the freezing grenades. And one of the great things about these grenades, just like the toxic grenades, are that they work on everyone, except the toxic grenades didn't stun the bigger enemies, whereas the freezing grenades do freeze the bigger enemies. They freeze everyone, with the exception of the Night Hunter, and I should throw that out there right now. None of these work on the Night Hunter. The freezing grenade does deal a small amount of base damage, but besides that, none of them do anything to the Night Hunter, so I just thought I'd throw that out there. But the freezing grenade freezes all the AI zombies, and it freezes humans, um, including volatiles as well. You can freeze volatiles, but one of the limitations is that that as soon as you hit them, it will break the frozen effect. 
and I thought I'd clarify that that goes for all enemies, not just volatiles. If you freeze any enemies and you hit them, that will break the effect no matter what kind of enemy they are. So that is one limitation of using these. But that doesn't change the fact that these freezing grenades are extremely, extremely useful. However, there is one special grenade that does top the freezing grenades, in my opinion, and that is the Stasis Field Projector. However, I will start by pointing out that the freezing grenades do have one advantage over the Stasis Field Projector, and that is that the freezing grenades affect every single kind of enemy, whereas the Stasis Field Projector does not affect humans. It still affects big zombies and volatiles, but it just doesn't affect humans. With that said, the effect will not break if you attack enemies, and that was the case with the freezing grenades, but if you use the stasis field projector, which will project regular and uh, regular zombies and virals into the air and freeze them, and for the bigger enemies, like the volatiles or the, the goons and the demolishers, it will freeze them in place. It won't suspend them midair, but it will freeze them in place, and you can attack them as much as you like. It will not break the effect, so this is really helpful, a really good way to get rid of demolishers, especially. You just freeze them, and they'll be stuck there in, there in the middle of their animation, and you can just beat the shit out of them, oh sorry, beat the crap out of them uh, until, until they die, and then, you know, once the effect is over, all of a sudden they'll just drop to the ground. I do also believe that the effect of the stasis field projector does last a bit longer than that of the freezing grenades. So I thought that would be a good thing to point out. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that that is the case. Anyway, just to sum it up, the stasis field projector is extremely fun to use, especially when you freeze volatiles mid-air. I love doing that. It looks really cool when you use it, it's really helpful, and it's just overall, it's a really good time. But anyway, that is it for this top 5. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something new. I'm still not sure if I'm going to make this like a weekly thing every Friday, or, or if I'm not going to. I'm not really sure because the thing with the scheduled uploads on certain weekdays and all that is that they're just really predictable and I find that they get a bit boring after a while. But then again, I would like to know from a viewer's perspective what you think. Would you prefer if I did these every single Friday or if I kind of just pushed them out? Sometimes it'd be once a week, sometimes twice a week and just be a bit more spontaneous with my uploads and not stick to a schedule. I'd like to listen to, uh, to what you think about that and if you don't really care or you don't really mind, you're not fussed about it, then that is also cool. But anyway, I would like to thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.